Chavez crew, boy. Hey, what's up, man? This is Jay Squad. They call me you tuned in to Chavez Crew Productions on Cloud Nine. Alright. Mm -hmm. da da da. Mm -hmm. da da da. Hold on, my brother. Help's on the way. Be encouraged, my sister. Cause trouble don't last always. And when you feel like. Bottom of Mount Everest Like get out the way but it ain't moved yet Climbing up the hill from which my help come from I saw his goodness in the land of the living Grandma called a check cause I get no rest I was blessed to be a blessing Woo! Went from Rick Flair to Jacob with the rest God ain't letting you go until I get it Look, I came out living but I came out And I begin to see what I had prayed for Make one rich and they had no sorrow hey. It's just an amen on this promise Look, hold on my brother Cause help's on, help's on the way Be encouraged my sister Cause trouble don't last always And when you feel like Dark clouds just won't go away My God is gonna shine, shine Shine, shine right on your face Put a smile, 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 smile right on your face. I wanna see a smile, 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 smile right on your face. See, trouble don't last always. You got to know that. Trouble don't last No, 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 trouble don't last always. 205, what's up, baby? Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. No, no. Smile, 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 smile right on your face. Just let the sun shine, 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 shine right on your face. Two or five, what's up, baby? All right, y'all, we got another episode in the books, man. Why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to everybody, brother? What's up, man? I'm Jess Cordell, uh, Christian hip hop inspirational artist from Birmingham, Alabama. Okay, that's what's up. What was it like coming up in uh, Birmingham? Uh, it was cool, man. It was cool. Uh, not all the time, but it was great. I mean, I guess what was normal for us, you know what I'm saying? Hood-type environment. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it was cool, man. First four days, that's what they know. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, y'all was on first four days. <laughs> right. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, the guy, the, you consider gospel, or what do you consider yourself? Uh, what genre do you consider yourself? Uh, I say gospel, hip hop, inspirational artist. Um, mm -hmm. Really, just want to reach people. You know, what I'm saying where they at, give them Christ. Where they at, and uh, how, however He gives it to me to give it to them, then that's what I do. Mm. So when when you started doing music, uh, did you start as like uh, like a regular rapper and then transition, or were you always interested <laughs> in? Um, Man, I, I had been in church, like, my whole life, you okay. know what I'm saying? And so, uh, like, I got away from God, like, when I went to the military, I was in the Marine Corps okay. uh, for, like, four, four and a half years, and so I got away from God, and uh, I got in a real, real tough situation, and uh, you know how everybody in that situation is like, man, bro, God, you get me out of this one, I'm going <laughs> to, and it, bro, it happened, but over time, and so uh, I, I came back into the gospel lane, and uh, one of my good friends, Tim Beck, he was like, bro, 
uh, if you're going to keep making music for God, make one about hypocrites. You should, you should make one. And that was when I was really straddling the fence. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, man, he really woke me up to, like, challenge me. Like, if you're going to do this, do it all the way. And so, man, I've been straight in since that conversation <laughs> over time, man. <laughs> So is there, has there been any, uh like, a, a certain situation that, that kind of just made you change and just wanted to go ahead and do it full force? Uh Yeah, yeah. That, what I was talking about in California, man, I had got locked up doing some stupid stuff, man. Gotcha. Just fighting and just stupid stuff, man. And uh, I really thought I was going to do some time. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and me just telling God, man, you get me out of this one, mm -hmm. like, bro, I'm going to be. And so over time and then in connection with Tim, like, Man, it just really changed me to a point to realize, like, man, this is what you called to do. This is what I called you to do, and I'm gonna guide you along the way. Okay. So what's been the what's been the hardest thing about um, trying to do take take the gospel lane? You know what I'm saying with the music? Uh, I I would say, man, uh, uh initially it was identity. Like mm -hmm. when you don't know who you are, man, it's hard to know what you're doing. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And I had some good good brothers like uh, Philo. Um, he an artist that's down in Orlando and uh, just some people who really built me up and like the Bible even says it's safety and a multitude of counsel and just mm -hmm. having them brothers around me who would, you know what I'm saying, even when I didn't look like, you know what I'm saying, a Christian hip hop artist or I didn't look like a Christian, they would speak life into me and build me up, you know what I'm saying, to a point to where I know who I am and who I'm called to be. Mm -hmm. So so what inspires you to do what you do, man? To see other folks' lives change, man. Um, I, I really uh, hone in on, especially like when we're doing like the youth events and stuff like that. If we can raise up a generation that's on fire for God, regardless of what's going on in the city, regardless of what's going on in the nation, man, we can raise up a generation that's unashamed and that's not going after God because they're scared of going to hell, but that's going after God because how good he is. And mm. so that that's my thing, man. It's just really showing people and showing the next generation like how good God really is to people. Mm. You you have a hard time reaching reaching the youth, or are they receptive, or how is it usually like? Um... Man, it is it is awesome, man. I'm, I'm telling you, like you'll be surprised how many kids or even adults, man, they just really want to have an encounter with God. And and when they the thing is, when you get on the stage, mm -hmm. they look at you as a you know what I'm saying, like somebody important. Exactly. And I'm not for real. It's it's really His will being done. But the thing is, when you get their attention. Mm -hmm. to a point of where you can point them back in the direction to God and they just want to encounter. The Holy Spirit does all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. yeah, I write music and yeah, I do this, but man, when they having encounters or they having a realization of how much God love them, that ain't my doing. It's all the Holy Spirit. That's what's up, man. So so when you do uh, events, what, what type of events do you do? Uh, I, I do uh, high school tours. Um, youth conferences, church services. Okay. Uh, I mean, I did birthday parties. Um, okay. And then the biggest one that we're doing lately is uh, just a prison tour. Oh, wow. What, what's what's that like, uh, the prison tour? Oh, it's amazing. Bro, well, I tell you, it's <laughs> amazing. You get to meet some guys who are often forgot about. You know what I'm saying? And, mm. uh, they all got their own stories, and they all in their own uh, sanctification process with God, man. But, man, you meet some people who are like, next level bro and like mm. they just want people to love on them they just want they happy that you there yeah. you know what i'm saying and uh being able to bring christ into those type of environments man what people have often forgot about and bring them hope love joy peace man it's amazing mm. so what you think is the biggest misconception that people have about uh people in prison because you know a lot of people have these uh preconceived notions you know what i'm saying i i think the biggest the biggest misconception is that everybody that goes to prison is bad. Hmm. The The difference is, man, is all of us have made bad choices, mm -hmm. but they've gotten caught making those bad choices. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody in the world is one step away from being in prison. You know what I'm saying? One wrong mistake away from yeah, being in prison. that's true, though. That's and so true. when you when you start to dehumanize people based off of where they are in life, mm -hmm. then you lose them, you know what I'm saying? You lose who they are and and people feel forgotten because people feel like they're in a certain spot in life that they can't be reached, but that's not true. Hmm. Um, have you had any particular uh, situation where you've, you've gotten to counsel somebody like that was a prisoner that really touched you in any way? 
Um, man, it, it's one guy. I won't say his name just because That's fine. you know what I'm saying. But uh, it's one guy who's a young guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. And uh, me and him, we stay in contact now. But he got out, and uh, he don't always make the right choices. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But just being there to you know, check in on the man nine again, and uh, that's the biggest thing, bro. Is people just people just need folks to know that, bro. Somebody care about you. Somebody loves you enough to reach out and check on you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so uh, it ain't all about oh, you got to go to church every Sunday. That's the biggest misconception in you know what I'm saying. Christianity is religion versus relationship, man. Mm. So so being a, a gospel artist, um. I know your your spirituality is important to you. Yeah. Um, can you explain to me a situation you've been in where you had to use extreme faith to get through the situation, and how did it help you to get through it? Who I can, I can even say recently, man. Like um, I, I recently changed churches, um, okay. and so the tough thing was uh, I had a dream a long time ago to where I was supposed to go to a particular place, mm -hmm. and um, all type of offense arose to keep me from going to that particular place. Mm -hmm. And even at the place that I was at, man, my pastor was amazing to me. I'm talking about supporting me, rock with me. And I just really couldn't figure out why God was telling me to go into this next chapter of my life or to move on to this next church. But man, it was really, once I got there, I experienced so much freedom that I had been dealing with for a long time. And um, man, I'm telling you like, just trusting God in that situation has like dramatically changed my life mm. to like really walk in free. Mm. So, so what would you tell a person that, that's having uh, issues trusting God? Um, how has God trusting God changed your life and why? So the biggest thing, bro, is people people want to trust Him, but it's hard to trust who you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so you got to spend time with him just like any other relationship. Like, bro, you got to spend time studying him. His word will tell you who he is. Mm -hmm. He even says in the Bible, man, that I exalt my word above my name. And so once you get to studying his word, you'll get to figuring out who he is and how he feels about certain situations. And so your trust builds when you can know what he intends or know the promises that he has for you in his life. And then you walking it out. To see him, and he's a good father, man. That's the thing people got to realize is he does not have the ill intent towards anybody. And so once you get to that place of knowing that God has the best intentions for me and I just got to do my part to partner with him, like, bro, that's when you can start really trusting him. Mm. Um, you know, some people have uh, preconceived notions about people who go to church or going to church for the first time if they've never been. What would you say to somebody like that? We are the church. That's what I tell them. We are the church. Not to say that we forsake the assembly because, I mean, we get together to build up our brothers, to get a word that, uh, you know what I'm saying, really produces freedom in our lives. But but you are a church. Like, the church is the temple. It's your body. And so when Christ is inside of you, when Christ is manifested in you, like, bro, that's when you can become a light in this world. Like Matthew 5 and 16 you know what I'm saying? He said, let your light so shine that they may see your good works, but glorify the Father which is in heaven. And as long as we lift up the name of Jesus, then people will be drawn. And mm -hmm. so we are the church. That's what's up. I like that answer. So let's talk about music now, man. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you working on right now, man? Uh, man, just a couple singles, you know, uh, just dropped the smile track. Uh, man, we working on a lot, doing a couple videos, getting some visuals out, mm -hmm. uh, doing a big push on the smile track. It's been doing good. So excited about it. Really excited about it. Yeah. What inspired that song? Um, just being in a lot of people going these dark places and they feel like, uh, that they're lost or that they, they feel like it is no end to their draining, especially like during Corona season, you know, people are losing their jobs, people are losing everything. And yeah. I just wanted to let people know like, bro, trouble don't last always. And uh, uh, God is still God, regardless of our situation, he's still God. And so you have a reason to smile because this won't last forever. Mm. What's the most meaningful song you've made and why? Ooh, you hit me with it. Let me see. <laughs> um. Oh man, that is that is um, that's a tough question. Mm. The most meaningful song I think I have made, uh, I think one that I dropped when I was rap to the rapper, um, and it was called Deadbeat, mm -hmm. and so uh, it was really 
painting a picture of not to um, make my, you know, daughter's mother look bad or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because she's a great mom. But, you know, how we get in those situations uh, as a man mm -hmm. and we feel... Uh, sometimes helpless in a sense. Thanks. If you have baby mama drama, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about. I know what but like, about. <laughs> yeah, just to know that, like, man, bro, I think that song meant a lot to me because I put so much into it as far as just, like, bro, I'm not that. Like, everything that they say, you know what I'm saying, that we are as men sometimes, like, we're not that. You know what I'm saying? If you love your child and you do the best you can for your child and somebody is limiting that, that does not make you, you know what I'm saying, a deadbeat. And so, yeah, y'all can check that one out. Route to the Rapper Deadbeat. That's that's <laughs> one of my favorite, most meaningful tracks. That's what's up. You ever um, consider actually being a pastor? No, no, <laughs> no. Hey, man, look, I have been so close to pastors. Like, I'm scared, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, like man. no, I'm just, bro, you got to think, like, how many people, like, whew, like, no sleepless, like, it's sleepless nights, constant text messages. Like, you have to be grace for that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And so I'm... I'm not ready for that, man, because, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm I'm still in my sanctification process, let me say that. I heard you. So, <laughs> so you got an a EP or an album or anything coming out, or are you just focused on the Smile track right now? Well, the Smile is the single. I do have an album that's out, um, and it's called My Music Room, and uh, it's the latest debut um, album that I put out, and so uh, it had not been too long ago, so yeah, y'all can go get that, My Music Room, the album. Uh, and make sure y'all stream that smile track that, that, that we pushing. <laughs> so that's your baby, boy. Oh, yeah, man. We rocking that thing. We rocking it. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like that track, though. That track's dope, man. Appreciate you, bro. I like, I like the performance. And so if we're going to close this out, man, I, I definitely want to close out saying, man, thank you to all my supporters, uh, my amazing wife, Chatty, um, all my kids, Kelly, Carter, Muffin, all my supporters, man, I love y'all. Appreciate you. It's just, and you are more than enough, man, to do what God has called you to do in this world. Yeet. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you, man. That's Chavez Crew, boy.